Any other announcements on the committees that you need me to say? Okay, Halloween, please. Halloween has been canceled. <laughs> Halloween announcement for those of you who will not be otherwise engaged tonight at 5 o'clock. Uh, at the well, we uh, continue our series, 40 Days in the Word. Tonight we're going to be talking about why you can trust the Bible, why you can trust it with the utmost of confidence. Uh, feel free to join us at 5. The second announcement this morning, each year at Halloween we like to let the community know that we're here and that we care, and so we hand out hot apple cider and donut holes to the community as they walk by. It's a great opportunity to meet people perhaps we haven't met, uh, and we just need a few extra hands to help hand out. You don't even have to bring anything, just help us hand it out, so that'd be great. If you're interested in doing that, please let Larry or myself know. Thank you very much. If you're interested, we're gonna have you park over here in the North parking lot. We will have a couple of eight foot tables right up on the sidewalk. <laughs> Last year we gave away 120 dozen donut holes. That's not enough sugar to keep our dentists happy. I don't know what that means. But we do need some help. Uh, age here regardless. We'd love to have you come and participate with us. We will start at right 5 o'clock. That's the, that's the beginning starting hour. And when we get done, we go home. Last year we actually ran out early. And so we went home a little early. If you could help us out, please, please let us know. Okay, other announcements? If you hold up your hand. Sam, you come around. Larry, uh, we announced last week uh, the Priority Pledge Express, and I think about everybody, there might have been some people I missed, or, we, or the, the, the campaign might have missed, but basically what we said last Sunday was uh, uh, $400,000 is the good round number that it takes to keep uh, God's work going here, and Finance uh, Committee has asked us to, uh, the Stewardship Committee, to get the pledges done by their meeting Tuesday. And they're meeting Tuesday, and then they wanted to see how many pledges were collected. And I think we've got we've had some great volunteers out there with the uh, Priority Pledge Associates going around and getting it. But I think we might have missed a few. If if we missed you, there's a uh, card back there by the box to put it in, and uh, we'll be making an announcement next Sunday with regard to how many, you know, what what the total amount was. So. Thanks again, and thank all those people that helped on this, too. Okay, thank you. Other announcements? All right. You must know that I did have to lunch earlier. It's okay, because my sermon is shorter. Okay. Is that good? You ready to worship?
Good morning. You look like you are ready and excited to learn. Am I right? My son says no, everyone else says yes. Today we're going to have a story. You can follow along, adults and kids, on the big screen. And we're going to discuss the story of Jesus walking on water. We'll have a slide, we'll have Ralph advance along for us, if you will. How many of you have ever walked on water? How many of you have parents who act like they can walk on water? <laughs> Leave it to me to ask questions. Okay. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, that will be the next slide. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, he told the disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Then he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. By evening, the boat had sailed a great distance from the land. As the disciples sailed toward the other side, the wind began to blow and the sea became rough. The sea became so rough that some of the disciples were becoming seasick. They looked out at the sea and guess what they saw? They saw Jesus walking toward them on the water. When they saw him, they were terrified and cried out in fear, Ah, it's a ghost! Don't be afraid. It is I. Jesus said, Lord, if it's you, Peter said, tell me to come out to you on the water. Come, Jesus answered. So Peter got out of the boat and began walking on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the waves, he was afraid. And he began to sing. Help, save me, Peter cried. Immediately, Jesus reached out and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they had climbed back into the boat, the sea became calm. Kids, we face many storms in our daily life, and if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can weather the storms. What storms do you have in your life? Thunderstorms, homework storms, clean your room storms, obey mom and dad storms, some things that are challenging and tough, right? So the, the idea behind the story is if you focus on God and let him help you, even the challenging things you can do with God's help, right? Okay. Let's pray and then we'll all go to God's heart together. God, we thank you that we can count on you, that you never leave us, that you're always right there by our side. Even when things are tough and difficult, you promise that you will help us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, and all the kids said, amen.
Mary Kay Wigner was, uh, her, her funeral was this past Tuesday. Please remember them. Irma Slack is going home. Uh, Joanne Boise, update on him, Michael. He's uh, progressing and taking care of his family. He's uh, going to be
you be kind enough then to take the hand of somebody next to you?
now I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. And the ushers, please wait upon us.
He also believed himself to be a world-class father. And I'm going to give you an example of something that he said just weeks before he died when he and his wife knew that his end was about to happen and she would be taking over the complete stewardship of their child and his estate. But he wanted, he wanted you to know what he said. Let, let, me, let, me, let me get this to move forward. My wife and I talked about this with our daughter. Children are much more impressed by what they see than by what you say. Children of any age will certainly keep you honest. If you've been preaching one thing all along and all of a sudden you don't do it, they're going to bring it up right into your face. For example, I tell my daughter it's not polite to eat with elbows on the table. Then after dinner, I was putting my elbows on the table. She says, Dad, your elbows are on the table. And if you're a man or woman enough to say, you're right, and take those elbows down, in fact, that is even stronger learning experience than her hearing it. Because it means that she is listening and observing. She understands it, and she recognizes it when she sees it. But it takes actions rather than mere words to accomplish that. Would you agree that actions speak louder than words? Did you hear the story about the little three-year-old who was learning to play golf with his grandfather? His grandfather was so proud of him, took him out on the course a couple of times and said, the kid has got a gift. And I'm going to buy him his own set of golf clubs. About a week later, they'd have a family reunion. The three-year-old who was being taught by his grandfather how to play golf says, watch me play golf. And he goes and he gets his bag and he brings it back. The first thing he does is he spits on the ground. He says about five no-no words and throws his golf club into the nearest maple tree. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words. He was learning more than just how to play. Right? The Apostle Paul is for our edification and our knowledge. Praising the Christians of Thessalonica. For being, and I quote, an example to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Formerly, these Thessalonians were pagans. They were idol worshippers. And into their community comes Paul and Silas and Timothy, and they begin changing things. They begin bringing the, the Christian doctrine, and theology, and attitude and culture of life to them. And that these, some of them, not all of them, these Thessalonians became imitators of Christ. They made this huge transition from idol worship to worshiping of, of Jesus Christ in the middle of much tribulation, according to what Paul writes to them. There was nothing phony about their witness. They turned out to be the real thing, and everyone who heard their story was literally compelled by it. And I think that's what we need today. We need people who are willing to be good examples. Hopefully, that as Americans and as Christian Americans, we are still willing to surrender to our own pleasures and our own desires and needs to the greater good. Hopefully, people who understand that this world needs role models. We still need to be the example in the world today. The question is, have we become good examples? Well, I found this on the internet. It was, it was listed as anonymous, but I, I thought it was pretty good. I'd like to read some of these to you. We have taller buildings but shorter tempers, wider freeways but narrower viewpoints. We spend more money but have less. We buy more but enjoy it less. We have bigger houses but smaller families. We have more conveniences but less time. We have more degrees but less sense, more knowledge but less judgment. We have more experts, but more problems. More medicine, but less wellness. We have multiplied our possessions, but have reduced our values. We talk too much, we love too seldom, and we eat too often. We've learned to make a living, but not a life. We've added years to our lives, but not life to our years. We have been to the moon and back, but we have trouble crossing the street to meet a neighbor. 
We have conquered outer space, but not the inner space. We've cleaned up the air, but have polluted the soul. We have split the atom, but not our prejudices. We have higher incomes, but lower morals. We have become long on quantity, but short on quality. These are the times of tall men and short character, steep profits and shallower relationships. These are the times of world peace, but more domestic violence, more leisure, but less fun. These are the times of more foodstuffs, but less nutrition. These are the days of two incomes, but more divorce, fancier homes, but more broken marriages. It is a time where there is much in the show window, but nothing in the stock room. Has any generation needed role models more than I would. Has there ever been a generation who is in the need of people who are willing to set a Christian example in the times that we have today? Have we become so self-centered that we do not see or are not concerned about the greater good any longer? We need heroes. We need people who are still willing to stand tall for the name of Jesus Christ. We need people who will still advocate the spiritual truth and stay with it. I'll just profess it on Sundays and then forget it when we go outside and profess it. We need people who will believe that it is their God-given duty to be a worthy example of Christianity. Not too many years ago, there was a woman, her name was Dranifus. She was known locally as Rose. She hailed from a small town in Albania. Rose and her husband would often open the doors of their home to the poor and the hungry of their village. And whenever Rose's daughter, her name was Agnes, uh, would see that there was a new person sitting down at the end of the dinner table, she said, Mom, who's that? And Rose would just say, she's just a relative. Agnes grew up to believe that she had a huge extended family. Even after Rose's husband died and the family was plunged into poverty, Rose found a way to continue to serve the poor and the hungry and to help the destitute. Agnes was so influenced by her mother's example of sacrificial love that she grew up to be an advocate for the world's poor. She devoted her entire life to caring for those who were in poverty and in need. Young Agnes grew up to become Mother Teresa, who was a living example of the 20th century Christ advocating in the world today. Agnes Strenovitz became Mother Teresa as a direct result of her mother's example. Examples still matter in our world. This is how people still come to the presence of Jesus Christ. They encounter Christ in those of us who are willing to share Christ in His power, in His grace, in His love, and His forgiveness with others. This is how children grow to be responsible adults. This is how people continue to come to the faith in Jesus Christ. Well, I know those who are willing and care enough to sacrifice our own selfish desires to live a life that contributes to the greater good. It is by those who care enough to set an example of Christian love, joy, hope, one of the books, and I've forgotten which one it was, I, I read the story, Chick, Chicken Soup for the Soul was the, the series. And it was told by a mother, uh, it was written by a mother who was in Costa Mesa, California. And it was a hectic day in her home, uh, the author said, because she has uh, seven children, all under the age of ten. And in one way or another, I'm sure that's a hectic home every day. On one occasion, she was having trouble with, with one of the kids uh, because she couldn't even get her routine chore, household chores done around the house because of one of the little boys, and his name was Lenny. What Lenny was doing, he was about three or four at the time, is where he followed his mother everywhere. And whenever she turned around, she'd either step on him or knock him down or bump into him, and he was always there. She, he was 
always on her heels. And several times she patiently tried to say, let me, you know, all the fun activities are outside. Why don't you go outside and play with your brothers and sisters and you know, it's wonderful outside. Uh, keep Lenny occupied. And wouldn't you like to play outside on the swing set? She would ask again and again and again and again and you get the point. He would simply smile his innocent smile at her and say, oh, that's all right, Mommy. I'd rather be in here with you. And then he would just bounce along right behind her. When she finally stepped on him, she turned around and she stepped on him for about the fifth or sixth time. Then his mother began to lose her patience and she insisted that he go outside and play with the other children. And then she said, well, why are you acting this way? Why, you know, you don't usually hang behind me like that all the time. He looked up with those sweet green eyes and said, well, mommy, in primary school, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps. But I cannot see Jesus, so I thought I would just walk in yours. Isn't that what it's all about? Role models in today's world count more than ever. Worthy examples of being Christians in our world today still make a difference in our lives. What would have happened if those Christians, or those people at Thessalonica at the beginning of the first century had not been faithful to Christ? Had they have not been a good example that Paul is writing about. Would you and I be in this church today? Would we have that example for us someplace else? I guess the real question, question is, are you willing to stand tall for Christ? Are you willing to set the example for those that are in, within your sphere of influence? Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Strengthen our resolve. Forgive us what is past. Allow us to be the Christians you have called us to be in this world. That in the world to come we may be with you. We pray that in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have your hymnals, page number 89, we're going to sing verses 1 through 4. If you would stand with me, please, it will also be on the big screen for you to read. Go ahead.